All right, on this video, I want to go on from talking about the multimeter to actually using it in a real life scenario. This is my fuel pump relay. It's off of my 97 GMC Suburban. And it's been doing some hard starting lately. And I thought I'd get into uh, checking the fuel pressure and the fuel pump relay. So what you do when you pull a relay out is you can take a, a screwdriver and, uh, and pop it open like this. Okay, I've already done that. Pull it out and this is what you have. A relay is just nothing more than uh, it's nothing more than just a big coil and when you run power through a coil like that it creates a electromagnetic field and that's able to pull in this plunger which the plunger is right here at the end of this thing. I don't know if I'm... let's, let's focus here. Yeah, that's the plunger. So when this coil gets voltage applied to it, it the magnet draws that thing that that end right there below my finger, okay? And at the other end, you can see right here this connection. So relays, they come in all different styles and you need to know, I wish this would focus better. You need to know is when, when the relay is, is off, meaning the position with no power, good grief, what has, what has power? What leg of the relay? Every relay on the side of it will have the wiring diagram. Maybe not every one, but most of them have this. And it tells you exactly what is what. If you can see here, you have this diagram where it shows the small set, the small, that's the, excuse me, that's the, uh, the winding. That's the control, they call it the control side of the relay. It's terminals 85 and 86. That's, that's what's going to activate that, that field coil. And then when it gets when you have that circuit going and it's got power, then I don't know if this is focusing. It's going to pull that plunger in over here. Now you have KL30 or terminal 30. That's the load supply power. And what that means is a, a relay is just a device that uses uh, a small amount of amperage to, to control a large amperage circuit like a headlight switch uh, or a fuel obviously here is a fuel pump relay so they'll do that so that it puts less of a strain on a switch because maybe in the old days before they really got into using relays for everything you would just have a big switch and uh, sh 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 so you can take a relay and and basically instead of burning up your headlight switch you could install a relay and take the original wires that would have gone out to your headlights and use those as the as the control side the the signal side of the relay so that you're taking the amperage load off of uh your headlight switch and then if you you'll you'll see you know places sell they'll sell a headlight relay wiring upgrade kits that you would do on your old car and it would brighten up your headlights because instead of running all that amperage through the headlight switch it takes the load off of it and you end up with better connections so anyway uh 85 and 86 are always the control power and ground to the the low amperage side of the relay the signal side and then uh 30 is always the load side supply the high amperage supply and that's what we're switching that's the whole point of the relay is to switch 30 to the circuit and this drawing uh, 87a is is normally touching it's normal this 87a is normally closed when you talk about electronic switches you have open meaning open circuit no continuity and you have a closed circuit it would have it would have continuity it would have you know very low resistance that's a that's a connection 
So when this when this relay is unpowered, right here, 87A has is going to be getting the power from terminal 30. So again, circuit is off, the relay is unenergized. You still have a connection between 30 uh, pin 30 and pin 87. Now in this one, you activate the relay. You give uh, 85 and 86 power and ground. It's going to pull the plunger, and this switch on this diagram is going to come over and activate terminal 87. And that's your, on this relay, that would be my fuel pump. And, uh, and that's basically what you want to check. But anyway, that's the, every single relay that I've ever, you know, come across in a car is, is this design. You have the same, you can, mem they taught me to memorize this. 85 and 86 is always the control side. It's always the that little filled coil inside the relay. Always, always, always 85 and 86. 30 is always the load supply, the high amperage supply. It's the big fat wire that you're dealing with, feeding power into your your purpose for this relay, the, like the fuel pump. And then in the world of relays, you have all kinds of options about the the load side being normally open normally closed some of them won't have two legs they won't have an 87 a and 87 they'll just have one and uh, and and you would basically have a disconnect between 30 and 87 meaning the relay is off your load is off and when you activate the relay you're getting connection from 30 to 87 here's what it looks like Again, I just showed you that. Some relays, you, you, can, uh, you can disassemble this and, and see these contacts. The way that relays usually go bad is this is the high load switch right here. So uh, I believe, I don't know, I could, I could prove it to myself and find out what's what. But let's just say this, this piece of metal is 30. That's terminal 30. And this pivoting switch plate is you know what the pivoting switch plate would be 30 and it's touching 87a okay and then when you activate it the magnet's going to draw it down and touch that piece of metal which is the load 87 okay in this particular example and what happens is you get corrosion in here i don't know if i can focus on that but basically, you would get a flashlight and look in there and see if you see corrosion. If you could take this plate off and figure out how to disassemble it, I'm not going to on this. I would destroy it. Some of them you can put back together. This one you cannot. And, uh, but if you took it off, you could see, you know, plain as day, if, that, if, if those uh, posts on there, which are a lot like kind of like the points on an old distributor you know the points get corroded or worn out and that's what's going to happen on a relay so that's relay checking 101 really really good to know um, it doesn't matter if you if you have lost this or don't have your wiring diagram or not you can usually figure it out just by the the diameter of the wires sometimes you'll be able to see two small wires and you're going to know that's the control side the low amperage wires and because because to operate this this filled coil this coil you know usually they don't take much more than uh, a cup like a half of an amp I, I don't know but they they basically are very low amperage and uh, and it's gonna th this could be a 20 amp circuit this could be a 30 amp relay you know on the load on the the, the output side that's the beauty of a relay. You can use a you can use a one amp circuit to control a thirty amp circuit. That's the whole point of it. And so it's a lot easier and cheaper to replace a relay when when it goes bad than to to risk a headlight switch like they used to do it, having a whole headlight switch burn up and not literally burn up. The melt the plastic melts. The wire harness pins that connect on here melt, and it be, you know it can almost start a fire. So there's a lot of advantages to using relays.